Welcome everybody to Raise on the Lab podcast. This is our Wednesday show with Ken and South. And today, of course, like every other Wednesday, well, every Wednesday, we just going to kind of close the door, uh, the book, I guess, on the bills and kind of open up and read the back page for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, today, we're going to have a special guest that's going to be listening. So if Ken sounds extra smart today, there's a reason why. <laughs> there's a reason why he sounds extra smart today. And as you notice, none of us is wearing commander's gear. Right after this. Podcast. Hey, what up, y'all? It's Benjamin St. Jude, DB for the Washington Commanders. I want to give a big shout out to Red Zone and the Lab Podcast. Ken, how you doing today, buddy? Doing good. How are you, Sal? I'm good. Good. A little busy, but we made it. I mean, are we really busy or we really wasn't trying to? Uh... <laughs> I mean, talk I was about, busy talk, today. I'm talking talk, about, talk about the bill. <laughs> I woke up oh, and I was like, oh, got to talk about, got, got to talk about that game today. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, Ken, uh, what's up with the hat, Ken? I, 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 are you trying to, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, are you trying to make a statement? Well, this cap made its debut back in April on the Burgundy Zone podcast mm-hmm. with Kyle, Mike, and Mike, and... I thought, hey, let's ju- draft some good players this year. And uh, my thought at this point is let's draft some offensive linemen next spring. So I'm wearing the hat today. Um, greetings, Allison. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Hi, Allison. <laughs> Slim is in the building. Slim. Through. All right, man. So the worst overreactions. We always get into our overreactions. We're going to start with Ken. What's the worst overreaction from from Sunday? I know we're going to have a few. Overreaction? I don't know of one, honestly. (laughs) No, you know what? I posted something (laughs) right as the game ended. And I said Cameron Cheeseman had a good snap on that field goal to avoid the shutout. And a bunch of people jumped all over me. You're focusing on that. And I'm like, yeah, considering all his snaps lately. But that was probably an overreaction on my part. He still has a lot to prove. But as far as the game itself, um, I think the fans have every right to be a bit angry about it. But also, I think it's best just to put this game behind them quickly. And I know the team is listening to all the interviews today. You know, the team is aware of what they need to do. And I think win or lose against the Eagles, we're going to see a team that's much more focused. What? Did you say something? News is not there. My bad. I had to go on mute. My wife called me when he wanted me to bring me to eat. I was like some Carolina, Carolina kitchen with smothered pork chops. <laughs> hey, that sounds good. Y'all can do DoorDash and send something to me. Okay. See, all the way down south, right? Yeah. Why you at it? I'll take some too. <laughs> oh man, overreaction, South. What you got? Sam Howe is 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 uh third string quarterback for us bench him 
Sam's terrible. Uh, Our whole team is terrible. Um, we need to just start over next year, 2024. That's probably the worst mm. overreaction. Yeah, man, but, I agree. You know, I agree, man. It's it, it was crazy. You know, he's he's not this. He's not good. My 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 biggest overreaction from the game is Erg Biemi is not who he said he was. Like. We it, and it, it it flips so bad, right? It goes from we cooking, right? We going to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. We about to make noise. To we say we just like we always been. I mean, yeah. man, the fan base is so fractured, and I get it, right? I understand, like we're so fractured. I get it. I understand, but man, like. Yes, EB has not called good games. I mean, he hasn't, um, and I have a, I have a lot of great. I'm really I'm, I'm I am disappointed in EB, but I still I still believe that he'll turn it around. Um, you know, I have full faith that he will. But he has called poor games. I mean, that's that's just the facts. You know, he's gone. Well, I don't even, I, I I ain't gonna say he's gone away. From what works, but he hasn't even tried what could work. You know what I mean? Like the things that we saw in the um, preseason, the crossers, you know, putting Terry in a slap, matching him up with linebackers, him and Jahan, you know, um, running the football. Every time this offense has been successful on, on most drives is when we're running the football, able to play action, right? And we haven't seen a quick game. We haven't seen him move the pocket at all. The one time he moved a pocket last week on the sprint to the right, I think, we got Terry for eight yards on a comeback route. We didn't go back to it at all. We didn't run no screens in the second half. The one time we do want to run a screen, it's already like third and forever. Like, you're not going to fool anybody. Um, So, like, when it comes to EB, Ken, um, and I don't see the West Coast offense, Ken. Like, I I haven't seen it. I, I, I haven't seen it at all. What's your take on it? And of course, Chase Radar's in the building. What's up, Chase? Yeah, um, I'm a little surprised at that. And maybe he doesn't have the weapons that he really prefers. And so I go back to my cap. Um, if you want these players, draft them next spring, sign them in the offseason and free agency. Go get the players that you want. I mean, he was with the team, what, since February? So go get the, those players. Now, they drafted two defensive backs in the first two rounds. Nothing against either player. And I was okay with that first pick. But the second round pick, is, you know, there were some good offensive tackles still on the board. So why not mm-hmm. go with that? And, um, you know, I uh, you talk about short passes, shorter routes, and things like that. One of the things in the EB offense that is a feature on intermediate routes is that two of the wideouts go down about 18 yards at the same time, and they do a hook. And it's the standard in his offense. If the quarterback needs to get the ball out quicker, why not amend that a little bit and make it 16 or 14 yards, give him that extra split second that he needs to get them the ball? Because even though it still might, might be tight space, both Dotson and McLaurin proven that they can come down with the ball. And they can do it in tight spaces. But, yeah, if you try to go down, down a little bit further, yes, you're putting him at risk, uh, I guess, especially against a good defensive line, as we saw this past week. Uh, another feature I would really like to see, and Miami did it to perfection this week, and I've been wanting it since week one, is why not try a shovel pass? That would have been the perfect play against that defensive line pressure. Every time they're just pushing the line back and a little bit of shovel pass gets a player in open space, send the receivers downfield a good 20, 25 yards. And if you do that, you're going to pick up a guaranteed 15, 18 yards, maybe more. So have Brian Robinson – or Antonio Gibson ready for that play. I'd like to see that once or twice a game. 
that will keep a defensive line honest at that point. So why not innovate a little bit? He's an innovator. So innovate. Yeah, and that, that that's what I'm so confused about. Like everything, every everything that we can do to slow down a pass rush, we have not done it. And the the running of football that we have done, it hasn't been consistent. And that's what's so baffling to me. Um, and I, I just don't get it. I just I just hope that he's not stubborn to try to make something work that just won't work. So, like, South, all of their sacks last week, all nine of them came off four-man pressures. So they're dropping seven. And all of this started from the Cardinals game. So people are watching. It's like these defensive coordinators is watching the tape, but EB, like, bro, are you watching the tape? Like, the Cardinals started with it, seven back, then the Broncos, seven back, and then the Bills, seven in coverage. So all of our routes are running into the coverage. Like, we have to do the things that we have to do to bring them closer so we can look to go over over the top. Are you kind of surprised that EB hasn't adjusted consistently that way? I mean, yeah, because, you know, we we – a lot of our fan base kind of praised EB and we wanted EB uh, because of the Kansas City uh, pedigree. So we were excited. We were like, oh, he's going to draw up these plays, get our, our best guys open. And the Ken's counterpoint, I think EB knows that our best players are our receivers. Our most talented players are our receivers. So I think he is doing his darnest to get them, them guys the ball. But the issue is... Sam's holding the ball too long. Coverage coverages are holding up. Our O line isn't holding. It's just it's just a a perfect concoction of terribleness for our offense. O line's not holding up. Sam's holding the ball too long. Defense is back in their zone. Seven back. They're dropping seven. So like, at some <laughs> point, you got to change it. You got to be like, all right, they're dropping seven. We got to run it, or we need to run quick game get our guys out there to block because prior because last year our guards couldn't move like we know this is well documented we did i can't i'm very happy andrew norwell is no part not on this team anymore because he couldn't get on those screens but our guards this year they can and nick gates can get out there i don't know about leno uh wiley probably can but i've seen some clips listen i don't know if mark tyler watches this but he was relentless on yeah. Monday. Yeah. Every yeah. time I got on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it now, <laughs> it was a tweet of him and a clip of Andrew Wiley messing up, running into his own guys, not blocking anybody. It was just, I was like, man, this guy's, I, I, so I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's it it it, it was kind of weird to like sit at home and like watch this game unfold, mm-hmm. and the blocking was getting any better. <clears throat> like it, it at at whatever point we real I, I realized that this is gonna get ugly. The game wasn't changing. Our guy could, weren't blocking anybody. Sam was either seeing ghosts or actually getting hit. So I don't know. Yeah, but you know, it was disappointing, and I think our best players being on the outside is almost a detriment to our team right now. <laughs> Trail's crazy. right. He's right, though. Wiley stays on the ground more than the yard marker chains. <laughs> He's right. He's right. I think that was when we were talking game, about. Trail. And training camp, too. Like, it's like, why do you always keep falling? And I think that was Wiley. Was it Wiley or – Oh, I forgot who it was. They just kept falling. Like, get up. Why you keep falling? Um, yeah, man. So, like, that's the thing is like our O line is not going to get any better, Ken. It, it's just is that, that they're just not. So this is where an innovative offensive coordinator. Um, yeah, yeah, it was it was Wiley. Like, this is where a, 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 a innovative offensive coordinator have to do the things necessary to try to mask that mask it as much as possible. And we kind of talked about some of those things that, that, that he can do. Um, So do you see him 
doing that? Like, because it's been three games, and for some reason, it's like he thinks this line is going to get better. You know, this situation reminds me a bit of 2014-2015 when Kirk Cousins was given the reins of the team at quarterback and Robert the Griffin, Robert Griffin III was on his way out. And I don't want to relive that history entirely, but what was the problem with Kirk Cousins in that first year as a starter? Held the ball too long. He was taking sacks. How good was that offensive line? Definitely wasn't the best in the league. But once he learned how to get rid of that ball quickly, he became a pretty good quarterback for Washington. And he's been a pretty good uh, quarterback since. Not great, but pretty good. I think that Sam Howell can become better. But he needs to prove it. He needs to have the count in his head that, you know, two and a half second count, which is kind of the traditional time to get out. Now, another thing he can do, and this is comes to this speaks to the innovative part, they need to roll him out more. And he's pretty I've seen a few games now where he's uh, rolled out to the left or to the right a few times. He's pretty pretty good at it. And if he can do that a little bit more, I think that's going to open up the offense. <coughs> and it's going to give the receivers downfield who might be in tight coverage a little more time to innovate and get open and can hit that intermediate or even a long pass. So I would say roll him out a little bit more, not a lot, but you know, slowly integrate that into the offense. Well, we have to do something, man. Yeah. And I know, like, <clears throat> and when you get desperate to a point where you just want to kind of, like, pop, pull the strings anywhere, um, and, and a lot of people have been talking about Lucas because he's on the team, right? Um, <clears throat> first, I think we should try the simple, basic things first off, like run the football consistently, um, do some um, some short game, do some crossers, get innovative do more pre-snap motion. Like, where has that been? Like, we haven't really seen a lot of pre-snap motion either. Um, Yeah, go ahead. Man, look, I don't even want to even say this because I have nightmares thinking about this offense. But last year, when we played the Jaguars and Carson Wentz was our quarterback, he started that game like 10 for 10. And it was all Mm -hmm. short game, quick game. It got him comfortable. And he either that game or the Lions game was the best game he ever had with us. Albeit he only played like six games with us, but that was his best game by far. It's the Jaguars game. Yeah, and 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 it, and it started with that quick game that it out 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 out, and I was like, all right, this is cool, you know, because we're getting like six yards a clip, and then he would hit like Terry for you know deep or whatever or Jahan deep, and I'm like. Yeah, I know Eric Bieniemy is supposed to be way better than Scott Turner, and hopefully he is. But at some point, he needs to do that. Like he needs to get that quick game going and get Sam comfortable because Sam never got comfortable in that Bills game. He our first drive was decent, I think. Right, our first drive was decent in that mm-hmm. game, mm-hmm. and then and then the wheels fell off, and then. I don't know what happened, and then uh, it just kind of seemed like, oh, we just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it got away from him, and then I think at some point Sam realized the game was getting away from us, so then he tried to hold the ball longer, trying to make a big splash play, and then it was just, you know. and then it was, Yeah, man, me, like, yeah. you go ahead, Ken. Yeah, let me ask both of you, because this is an honest question. Have – Either of you seen a play action pass from this offense at all this year? Because I haven't. Well, Maybe I've seen. Okay, down. so yeah, I, I've I, I've seen it. Um, actually, I keep referring to it. Remember this, and I'm just talking about this past game when B. Rob got like I don't know 17 yards and back to back rushes, two first downs. Yeah, they took him out, brought in, and right after that, they did a play action 
and threw it to Cole oh, that's Turner right. in, yeah. in the middle okay. of the field. Yeah, you're right. And then they brought in Gibby, and then they did three straight pass plays, and we went – it was like third and forever. Well, what I'm trying to get at <laughs> is that play action is really not utilized it's not. too much in this offense. And I think we need to see some more of it. We have to run the ball. Well, yeah, I'm not – You know what I'm saying? Like, we got yeah. – <laughs> We got yeah, I, the mean, ball, you know, right? I mean, um, Gibson has two carries for 17 yards and Robinson 10 carries for 70 yards. That's eight and a half yards a carry and seven yards a carry between the running backs. And we only had combined from them 12 rushes for the entire game. I realize you're trying to play catch up and you need to do a lot of passes, but there needs to be a, a bigger commitment there. The and, and that's the thing is like what I was saying, like uh, every every one of these games in the first half, it was it didn't get away from us in the sense where we couldn't run the football. Yeah. Like we're, we're not just passing the football because we're down by so much. That's that's the the confusing part. Like it's they, it was 16 nothing going into the fourth quarter. Right. Like we could have been running the football in the first. Like we was in the red zone three times. We got in the red zone on the goal line. When they stopped us on fourth down, we passed the ball three straight times and didn't want to run it. In shotgun. In shotgun. We need That's the tush not push. Gonna do it. <laughs> we <laughs> needed the tush push. <laughs> we but need no, something, like, Ken. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like, yeah, we're playing, was we're like, playing a team this week that does the tush push, so I had to say that. And I wanted to say push. Crazy. <laughs> the tush push is crazy. Uh, uh, our special listener out there, you know who you are. You hear him talking about tushies and stuff, right? Um, so, <laughs> so like it's it's like um, when when you think about it, right? And it's like, man, we have to run the football. And you think about like what I was saying, like Lucas part, right? Lucas has been a backup for like more than like three years, like. He's a backup in the swing tackle for a reason. The times he do come in the game, he's in there for like moments, not stretches. Thank you. Like it, that's the reason why he's a swing tackle. Like he, like just because the 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 starter is not good doesn't automatically mean the backup is better. Because obviously he's not. You know what I mean? So like, it, it, I mean, I don't know, man. And then she, somebody was talking about B Rob can't block. Like, like look, like. B Rob is not the best third down blocker, but he does a good enough job. But if you put B Rob on up on a line of scrimmage, like he's a tight end, that's unfamiliar territory. You can't ask him to block defensive ends from that position. It's unfamiliar to him. So that's just not fair on his part. And we're about to go to break, but yeah, man. Everybody know Sam got into week 13. Or uh I'm gonna Agenda's start already Kenny. being pushed. Agenda's I'm, I'm, already I'm, being I'm, pushed, I'm, Chase. I'm I'm gonna start. I'm I'm gonna start <laughs> my my Mike Penix Penix agenda. It's gonna be coming after this. We're gonna get into some takeaways from the game. What's going on? This is Steve from Command This Podcast. You can watch our show on YouTube, or you can catch it anywhere you get any of your audio podcast platforms: Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeart. It doesn't matter. We're on there. Peace and hell. All right, takeaways. What you got? Give me a key takeaway from the game Sunday. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Oh man, I don't even know if I have a takeaway from that game. Um. Just play better. I don't know. Play better. That's all I got. Really, like it was just a whole. Watching that game, like it, 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 like it hurt, like it hurt a little bit because I was just at home, like, all right, what are we doing? You know, like what are we doing here? It was, it was almost painful to watch. Um, what's my takeaways? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is bad, <laughs> bad. We look bad. That's that's my takeaway. You look bad. That's the takeaway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Ken? My takeaway is to just move on completely from this game. Just put it out of your memory. 
that goes for players, fans, coaches, everybody. You know, this is a new week. Let's focus on the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's try to be competitive. You know, let's just try to be competitive. Philly's 3-0 and for a reason. They're a good team. They're a Super Bowl contender. So let's try to be competitive. I mean, we went in there last year. They were 8-0, riding high, and we got a 32-21 victory. And so why not try to go out and be competitive this week? So my take from the Bills game, forget about it. Just forget about it. I remember in high school, my junior year, we had a horrible game, which is unusual for our coach because um, he never had a losing season in 38 years of coaching. But we just had a horrible game. I think we lost 38 to nothing or something like that. We didn't score. We didn't do anything. And I thought when we got back in the locker room after the game, he was going to have us come in on Saturday and we would practice for about three or four hours. I knew that it was uh, going to be brutal, whatever it was. And he, and he said, gentlemen, let's just forget about this game. See you on Monday. <laughs> and it worked. I mean, it honestly did. We were really competitive next game. I think we even won that game. So that's my takeaway from this. Yeah, I know, Ron. Like, like, if y'all was practicing for three or four hours, that's child abuse. Like, we no. been practice for like an hour and a half. You know, I played back in the 70s. <laughs> nah, we practiced dude, hard. Hey, two a day. Two a day. It's still happening in Georgia. They still do that? Isn't it? Hey, hey, look, yeah, hey, Trail. Like, Trail, you told me this was going to be his him game this past Sunday, bro. Like, I, I, I ain't messing with you no more. You told me, you told me this is going to be his him game. Uh, this past Sunday, that's what you told me, man. Uh, <laughs> Corey on the warpath, follow Corey, subscribe to his YouTube. That YouTube, like, Corey does some great work, he does live things, he goes at the game live. Um, uh, he commentates the game live. So, um, and Corey, man, he's super funny. I think he's one of the, I think he is the funniest content creator in our community, man. This was a mouthwash game. Spit and move on. Yep. Pause. You see what I mean? <laughs> That's a major pause. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Forget I know we're not on. drafting already. Yeah, we are. No, nah, we ain't. <laughs> we, yeah, we drafting already. Got to draft good players. You see Ken Hat. You see Ken Hat, Glenn. We, we got to draft good players. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, state champs two a days. Yeah, we used to we 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 used to do two a days. I used to hate yep. two a days because seven o'clock stretching at seven o'clock in the morning. Come on, I used to hate that. Philly is not um, unstoppable. That's right, Glenn. They can lose. We did it before. Talking about playing football in the seventies, our special guest today, <laughs> Unc JT. What's up, Unc? He said the seventies. <laughs> I'm the nice one here, okay? <laughs> I, I see. Welcome. I see. Deuce, Deuce that put me in the 70s. Not quite that far. <laughs> now, the 80s, yes. And, and we did have two a days, and we did have to walk uphill both ways, and I did have to carry the bags for the upperclassmen, and I did have to be there at 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, all the pr practice didn't start at 545. Those are the things that built character back then. Right? Yeah. To that, and yeah, right. Big Simple is funny. I know Big Simple is on the show every Friday. Big Simple is definitely funny, man. But man, you and Corey, like, we need to. I need to see you two, Corey. I need to see you and Big Simple one show, just one. Please, like, make that happen. If we got to do it on Raise on the Lab, let's make that happen, man. That's gonna be. We're probably not gonna get nothing done on that show having you two guys. But JT, welcome, uh, Ken. This is Ken South. Um, this is JT from on um, Twitter Space. This is who we who we have named Unk. This is Unk. <laughs> Unk, how you doing today, man? Thank y'all for having me, Deuce. Thank you for having me. Um, I know if you call me in, you want to talk about something real old. Mr. Glenn, probably the only one in the Twitter Spaces who who understands some of the stuff that I be saying. So uh, I know you want to talk about something that's real old, or, or you you want to compare us to something real old. So I'm ready. <laughs> oh man, you're so my I mean, kind of guy. You're my kind of guy. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, so like basically we 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 were just kind of talking about some takeaways from the game. Of course, we talked about um the offensive line, but I know your your point was more so focusing on the defense. And yeah. a lot of us, you know, outside of not having a a, a, court, a QB spy on those third and longs was very yeah. troubling. And that's kind of everyone is kind of like, yeah, that, but then the defense was good. They held them to 16 points, but um, you your your approach to that well is more than that. Like the defense still needs to get better. So just kind of like break down and what w- what do you mean by the defense still needs to get better? Here's here's my point. Um, the defense is the numbers are always going to look good. They kind of like Kirk Cousins in Minnesota, Washington, or wherever else he go. He gonna have a great completion percentage. He gonna have a high yards per game average touchdown um but when you need him the most he might not be there the defense we have placed our money in the defense when i say money our collateral draft picks contracts all of those skew towards the defense we got a rookie quarterback we got o lineman that we we basically pulled off different scrap heaps um you know and hoping that they'll that they'll grow into uh system fits um, but on defense, we have studs, grade A, first round picks, guys that we all believe can move the needle on every level except for linebacker. You know, we got a kind of a hole in the middle. Even that, we got Jamin, Jamin, the first round pick. So on every level of that defense, you have what we would consider stud, first round picks, people who should move the needle. You can't come out in the beginning of games. You're setting the tone. You can't continually have – what did I send you, Deuce? In the second quarter, uh, you know, we only had the ball for two minutes. Mm-hmm. So that means they held the ball for 13 minutes, right? Um, that's not the that's not the offense. It wasn't because of the, the turnovers. The turnovers really didn't start until the third quarter when we started pressing. If you look at the – if you look at the box score, you know, I'm old school, so I'm still reading the paper, the box score. But if you look at the <laughs> – if you look at the box score – the 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 the, um, the avalanche of things that were negative from an offensive standpoint that happened started to happen after halftime. So what does that mean? You put the office in the office put you in the position where you were on the field, but in turn you did not stop our opponents, meaning not points, but not getting off the field. You didn't give you didn't feed the ball back to the young offense so they could find their way. And so what happens? They start pressing in the second half. The play caller mm-hmm. was probably pressing in the second half because you're down 16 to nothing. Effectively, that's three scores. I don't know if we have plays that are, are designed to get us three scores in five minutes. I don't think that's the type of offense that we're running. So I think you know, we put ourselves in these positions where we really, really have to uh have to lean on our defense, right, so that our offense can catch up. And that's what I keep saying. I keep saying Ron is trying to play complementary football. Ron has given Jack Del Rio the keys to the vault. He's not giving it to Eric B. Enemy as yet. Yes, he let Eric B. Enemy run with what he has. Jack Del Rio has the key to the vault. He has first-round picks. He has high contracts on every level of that defense, right? On the offense, you got Terry McLaurin. And the and the cast of characters, right? With with Sam Howell trying to come around as the first round, as as the uh, quarterback. So I just think we we got to really put the onus on the defense that it's due. We need them to lead. We when you need them to be the flag carriers for the Commanders until the offense is is ready to uh, you know set a mantle. My uh, comp would be the Jets. You know, when uh, when Aaron Rodgers got hurt that first game, what happened? The defense went nuts. Mm-hmm. They went nuts. Mm-hmm. They led. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't take that quarterback over ours in a million Sundays. But they led to the point where they had opportunity to win. You know what I mean? And so that's what we need. We really cannot have, you know, the breakdowns that we're having on defense. We, we can't have no excuses for the defense because that's where we have hung our hat. We have said this is going to be a defensive football team, what, whatever hap- whatever is happening on the offensive end, and I'm saying that with my actions, not just with my words. 
I'm getting you picks, first round, second round this year, three, four first round picks on on the line, first round pick at linebacker. You got several dudes coming off the, uh, you know, in the rotation at safety that we are we absolutely believe are studs. I mean, mm-hmm. we got three, four safeties that w- I know I do. We believe yeah. they're studs, mm-hmm. right? So we mm-hmm. we have to hold them to a higher standard right now than what we're holding the offense because the offense is still developing. It's still gelling. Yeah, I agree. And, and Ken, how, how do you feel about the defense? Like, for me, like JT was saying, we're, we're, not, we're not disruptive enough. Like, we're not disruptive enough. Like, not consistently anyway, right? Like, and it, like what the Ron Payne did last against the Denver game, we got the sack. TFL batted ball. We we put that on a pedestal, but now he's a no show this past game. Like, what's your view of the defense? And and and, and Mitty Mitty said he thought Doug Williams joined the live. <laughs> <laughs> Mitty stupid. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man. <laughs> now um Look, we have uh, – I agree with JT. We have studs on defense, but and they need to be playing like studs. Um, I think we need a much more aggress- aggressive scheme for each game, much more aggressive. Um, you know, run stunts, whatever. Look at what De'Ron Payne did in Denver that one series in the third quarter. He dominated that one series. These guys, that's what these guys can do. John Allen can do that. Mm-hmm. Deron obviously can. Chase Young, I think he'll get back to that once he gets a little more uh, steam in his legs. Um, Cam Curl, one of the best in the game at his position. Derek Forrest, I know he stumbled these last the last the last week, but he's still one of the better free safeties around. All these guys, this top to bottom, my goodness. And right now, the only player in that game, in the Buffalo game, that really shined was Kendall Fuller. He was playing like a dog. Why wasn't everybody else playing like a dog? I know John Allen is very elusive. But, (laughs) you know, why didn't we have a spy on John Allen? I mean, Josh Allen. We could... You know, I think we need to use Jamin Davis as a human missile at least 10 times a game to get in that backfield and go after that quarterback. He has the experience now. He can do that. Uh, Cam Curl, once in a while, why not send him on a blitz? You know, I think he he can be good at that. He's proven a few times he can get back there. So run a couple, three surprise plays like that. Run some stunts. These defensive linemen know how to do that. They learned that at Alabama. They learned it um, while they were one of the best teams in college. And Derek Forrest, I've watched him at Cincinnati, one of the better free safeties in the nation. And I was so glad that we uh, drafted him in that fifth round in 2021. I really felt like coming out of uh, Cincinnati, he was going to be a starter his first year. He wasn't. He was more of a special teams guy. But last year we saw what he could do. You know, if you can just get this this entire team on one page and go out there and play like dogs like Kendall Puller this past week, give it their all, but have a good cohesive plan each game. You know, I think this Buffalo game and the first half, the team was still in it. Yep. And if they could have scored on the opening drive in the second half, they could have potentially been within one score. Mm-hmm. And so they, they were there. They were inside the red zone. They were at the at one point in that game in the first half. They were at the one-yard line. They were at the 13-yard line. And another time, I think they were at, what, the 18-yard line. Yeah, we was in the red zone three times. Three times. No, no points. With yeah. a first down mm-hmm. all three times. Mm-hmm. They come away with zero points. The thing that made me mad in, 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 in that regard 
was that we should have gone for the field goal when we were down 10 nothing. That builds a little bit of confidence, and it helps, you know, it, it kind of boosts the defense, like, hey, we got to score. We held them. We got to score. So let's go out there and hold them again. Let's stay in this game. We can do it. We're at home. Mm -hmm. We have all the alumni here, 175 of them. And they won a lot of games. They won Super Bowls. They won a lot of playoffs games. Let's show them we can do that too. Yeah. So, so like, so, so South, um, Corey was saying like we, we did, like we covered Stefan Diggs, like he was just some bum or some third, <laughs> some third receiver type dude. Like we showed him no respect, but, but th this is a question like, like Addison said, our corners need to say no. Like, Kendall Foot is the number one rated corner right now in yep. one on one coverage. Yep. Um, St. Juice is pretty good. Like, so South, I don't think we need need cor uh, safety help over our corners. But Jack Del Rio's defense is about keeping everything in front of you. And the more we that 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 begins to chip away. Like what we want our OC to do, chip away at that to bring them closer. But other teams do it to us, but we don't do it to to them. So, what's your take on how JDR runs this defense? I think the issue is a lot of the times. I think our front four, they know, they know that they're the guys. So, like, I'm not saying that this is true, but it seems like it sometimes. Sometimes I feel like they rest on their laurels. Like mm -hmm. I'm Deron Payne. I'm John Allen. I'm Chase Young. I'm Montez Sweat. Y'all can't block us. But more often than not in this Buffalo game, Josh Allen was hanging out in that pocket. <clears throat> like he was sipping on some tea, some water, some whatever his choice of beverage is, he was sipping on it back there just <laughs> do, 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 and finding somebody that's open. Yeah, Unc, you sip on that water, man. Yeah, water. <laughs> we love water around here. Yeah, we love water around here. Don't have mine. But yeah, so so my whole thing is JDR, like mm -hmm. cool. If you wanna if you wanna run a vanilla offense, I mean defense, you need to make sure your guys are getting to the quarterback. Because if they're yep. not getting to the quarterback, we're cooked. And yep. what happened on Sunday? We got cooked because yep. we were dropping people in coverage. Josh was just hanging hanging out, hanging out, just, just hanging out back there, picking up. Diggs went crazy. I don't know what I don't know what was going on. I, I mean, they were in zone, so like he was just sitting in the zone. But like corners, linebackers, safeties, they can cover for so long until mm -hmm. somebody's right. gonna sit in a hole. Mm -hmm. Three seconds. Um, so right. cool. Like if JDR, you want to run that the defense like that, awesome. But you got to make sure at least one guy is winning mm -hmm. all the time. And in that game, they weren't. They were not winning. I don't even know. It seemed like we had our backups in the game the whole game. For, for the most part, I was like, what's going on? Because Like the fourth no quarter one, of a preseason game, huh? Yeah, like no one – I was like, man. I, and then I, I was looking at the screen like, our guys even playing? I'm looking at their 93s out there, 94s out there, 90s out there, 99s out there. I'm like, these guys are just out there, I don't know, play, you know, dancing with the linemen. Like, yeah, come on, man. man. That was, that uh, was they, crazy. What's up? What's up, Kamish? Appreciate you for uh, the one thing I think <laughs> this defensive line could do and should do more often, not necessarily on every play, but they have the ability to collapse in on that pocket, and that's a lot of what Buffalo did on Sunday. Keep you know doing those bull rushes and and um, make that quarterback have his passing lanes very limited. And then guess what? He's going to try to scramble. He won't have anywhere to go. And Josh Allen is pretty good at that. But if he doesn't have any lane to go out on, and he had plenty of those on Sunday, uh, then that's a much different game on defense. So let's start taking that pocket, collapse it, mm -hmm. and use the bull rushes to do that because we have four guys that can do that on just about any play. So – I think that uh, to me, it looked like the plan was for them to stay in their rush lanes. Yeah. Right. But staying in your rush lanes and, 
and you still don't have a spot, you or you giving them four or five seconds. You either giving them four or five seconds in the pocket, or if you collapse and you don't have a spy, he's running wild through the middle of your defense. Yeah. You 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 gotta you gotta make a plan that can uh, adapt. And and this is the thing that's frustrating to me uh, because our coach Ron, he from the eighty five Bears. All they did was wreak havoc. I mean, Buddy was a, a madman. I mean, he was he was send nine dudes and leave two safeties back. But he didn't care, and and that's how they. I mean, that's how they really intimidated the whole league. And I'm like, dude, you have to be you have to be itching in your skin to watch the team that you are shepherding that that's not getting pressure when you come from that type of environment. And so I'm I'm very interested to see kind of the adjustments that will be made because that's what I'm looking at now. What defensive adjustments will we make? You know, everybody all week, everything we've been hearing, well, EB need to do this. The offense need to do this. I want to see what the defense is going to do. I, I, I want to see. Long, you you <laughs> go, got to go point. ahead. So I, think, I think that game plan was don't get up too far uh, up on them, uh, you know, in the pocket, maintain, like, keep them in the pocket. But cool, bro. You giving them five seconds. I think yeah. what JDR thought he was going to do what he did with the Jets. Like you keep him in the pocket, uh, make Josh Allen beat you with his arm. Oh. And I think I think that's what it I I I think that's what the the game plan was. And he sure enough beat us with his arm. But see, like in the in the in the Jets game, they was getting to him quicker, right? They was they was moving yeah. him and they was boxing him in. The thing with our tackle, especially yeah. playing this 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 these three techniques, like. We, we we don't have like run stoppers. They, they're not there to, to 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 hold the line for the linebackers, right? Both of these guys are to get upfield to the quarterback and tackle the running back as you as, as you as you get there. So these guys ain't gonna be just sitting in lanes just looking. Like they're trying to get upfield, and the the thing with that that's fine. Like you can do that, but you have to have spies waiting and sitting there's no reason why Jamin Davis or Cody Barton should be 15 yards down the field with the safeties on third and 15 when you have a mobile quarterback that should not be the the that should not be the game the game plan whatsoever and Allison like <laughs> a 46 defense Mark yeah I, I haven't seen that in, in, in 20 years <laughs> Buddy Ryan. Buddy Ryan. That's why I see yeah, that. I haven't seen that in 20 years. He was I only see that on the goal line these days. But <laughs> but I will say this what they what they can do and and won't break won't be a drastic break from screen from scheme. They could do zone blitz. I saw um I think it was uh I think it was the Bills where they took and tilted. So the right side of their line came with the linebacker and the safety and and the left side of the line just played neutral right yeah. and all of the pressure came from one side and we didn't have enough over there to to cat to catch it you can mm -hmm. you can do zone blitz you can drop you can play more dime with all of these safeties that we have that we think are really good why are we not playing more dime we only need one linebacker and yeah. and, and, and then one of those safeties can be your spot so you have somebody fast enough to at least catch up to somebody like um Josh Allen, you know, to to be the spy if Cody Barton can't do it. You know what I mean? So it's it's very it's it's tweaks that can make be made. And what I'm saying is there's enough groceries in the cupboard on the defense to make an impact on the defense. And as fans, we have to really look at okay, what are we doing on, on defense, right? Because that's where we're spending our money. That's every time they come on the field, I should be ready to get out and just go crazy because some I think something crazy is about to happen. I think they gonna yeah. go nuts every time they come on the field. And I and I will tell you, except for that one quarter really in yeah. Denver when we took control, I have not felt that way. And that's concerning to me because that's when we spent the money on the groceries. And 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 Trail, uh, uh I mean CeeLo, what's up, CeeLo? And I think Commissioner's in here too was up coming man, Commish, CeeLo, Trail. I know y'all working hard, but y'all miss some wild spaces today, bros. 
<laughs> it was wild today. It was I crazy. argued. It was crazy. Days. I don't know why I argued. Like I feel so bad. I wasted an hour and a half with Krim today, and I feel so oh, bad. What are you talking about? Hell, I, I feel, bro. I feel so bad that I wasted an hour and a half. I missed it. What are you talking about today, dude? The same old, same old. And I knew I told myself Jacoby? I'm not arguing with him. Same old, Risk same it? old. Same old, same Ain't old. Ain't no way. Yeah. You still talking now, about Jacoby. When, when, yeah. I, yeah. I, Glenn, uh, uh, when I logged in, Glenn was up, right? It was oh, like, yeah. I, that man, was evil I was challenge. like, who are these? It's Glenn, I ain't never heard Glenn. Glenn went slam off on the dude. I was like, man, this is, this is good theater. I was going to, I was driving to drop the off. Eagles, man. Eagles <laughs> and the Giants. I was Eagles like, the Glenn about to take off his good. belt and, you know, and pass out some spankings up in here. I'm like, good. E e Eagles and the Giants. And look, CeeLo, like, it's not, it's not, I, I hope so, Alice. I hope he do something. Yeah. Both of these coordinators need to, need, need to do something. He, he has to be. And, and the other thing, Deuce, from a defensive standpoint, I know I'm talking a lot. From a defensive standpoint, we should be doing multiple things. You've had these guys, the bulk of these guys you've had for at least three seasons. You got a bunch of these dudes that's entering or either on their second contract. You got somebody at every level that's on their second contract, right? Mm -hmm. You should you should be able to quarter to quarter make adjust. Make you got to make that other team adjust to what you're doing. If you're always catching, you will get bowled over at some point. You got to make them adjust scheme wise, physicality wise, enthusiasm wise, and I think those are places that we we really need an upgrade, um, not a not a personnel upgrade, an attitude upgrade from our defensive side of the ball. Also, yeah, for sure. uh, to to piggyback on that, we got they drafted a manual for which is supposed to be a ball hawk, supposed to pick sixes, this, that, and the other. Come on, man, we gotta. We gotta, we got. If our defense need to make a play, somebody needs to make a play. Somebody needs to make, have some shape because Forbes not even playing. He played like 41 percent of the snaps last week, I think, something like that. So he's not even out there trying to make plays. I don't even. Do we even? Can so, have so a like, so, so, so the thing with Forbes for for some reason, right? Uh -huh. Well, maybe it's because I think St. Juice is better at run defense. Um, so anytime that they go 12 personnel, they mm -hmm. take out Forbes and they bring in Percy Butler. That's why you see the, like, why? I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. They go bigger, they bring in the bigger player. So pause, but that's, that's what, you know, Big pause. that's the, that's the thing with that. But, um, on the other side of this, we're going to, we, 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 we going to talk a little bit more about, um, this defense and I want y'all to think about something. Ken, I'm gonna come right back to you when we come back. I think Jamin Davis should should go, should blitz at least 12 times minimum a game. We're gonna talk about that when we come back. Saturday brunch with the ladies of HTTC, sponsored by Red Zone in the Lab. Join us Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern as we discuss everything NFL and of course brunch. See you soon. Hail to the commanders. What you think, Ken? Just a quick aside. Um, that ladies brunch every Saturday. Why is it ladies like brunch so much? Whenever I date a girl, they always want to go to brunch, especially on a day when I'm free. And they want to go spend a bunch of money on something I don't want to do. Ken, I can tell you why. School us, school us out, because I need to know too. I'm old too. Let, hey, let, let hey, me look, know. Look, hey, look, yeah. hey, look, listen. If I sound I like Bill I'm, Bird, I don't know why I'm getting that's so where close. I got it from. <laughs> hey, look, I don't know why I'm getting so close to the camera because this is online, but uh, they love mimosas, bro. <laughs> mimosas. <laughs> hey, mimosas, right, now look. baby. <laughs> That's okay. Now, okay, I'll give you that one. I'll give now, you that. now, look, now look. That special guest that's listening right now. You heard him, right? You heard him, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to answer your question, um, like I said earlier, you you just said twelve times. Split some twelve times. I'm fine with that. Um, I said earlier ten times a game, just you know, and have him spy. I mean, to me, it's a no brainer. This is a young man his, who is in his first year, he looked lost and confused. The last year, you started to see improvement. 
This year, I think you're starting to see a player that started to become a pretty good linebacker. Mm-hmm. But we're still misusing him. Yes. So you're going to, you're going to come up against a quarterback that's even more um, diversified than Josh Allen. He can get down the field. He can scramble. He can make good passes. He can do it all. And so you're going to need a spy on him. And you can switch it up a little bit. Some I, What I would say is once in a while, let the spy be Cam Curl, because he's pretty good at that. Yeah. So don't have it every play, Jamin Davis. But, yeah, send him, okay, sure, 12 times a game. I, I would, I'm a little more conservative and say 10 times. But let's um, have the other two or three times let Cam Curl do it. So – I'm on the same page with you, Deuce, on that one. And I'm sure I, I see nodding improvement from JT. Uh-huh. South has his poker face on. I'm just disappointed in his defense. <laughs> 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 so, I so mean, I'm, I'm just disappointed, man. It was hard. It's hard. It's still hard. I, I'm probably not going to get over it until the next game starts because it was just disappointing. But Jamin. He needs to blitz every three downs. Once every three downs, send him. <laughs> send him. Because in that Buffalo game, when Josh Allen was sitting back there, even if it's a delayed blitz, Jim Davis was a 4-4. Even if it's a delayed blitz and you see him hanging out back there, go, bro. Go. We, what, what, are we, what are we doing? He's just out there 20 yards, uh, not covering anybody, by the way, uh, just out there covering grass. Mm-hmm. Like, go do something. Yeah, and so, do you know? I just think you you have to activate your athletes and your playmakers so that they can make plays. And right now, I don't I don't know if we are putting all of our playmakers into play because we're so bent on playing the scheme that we're not letting them be athletic. Everybody's out there being a robot, so. I don't know how many defensive downs they play when you say twelve. It sounds like it sounds like a lot, but I don't know how many defensive snaps. No, I mean they I think play. they get about what, like what, fifty to sixty snaps uh, yep. a game. Um, I not still, I, I don't, I don't think he's out there. Yeah, not that game. I don't think he's out there <laughs> in dime packages. I think it's still Barton. I think they need to put Jamin out there. So yeah, man. So like out of like 40, 30, 30 to forty snaps. Minimum, he yeah. should be blitzing twelve times. And, and, and so, Bruce, 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 Bruce said he should blitz every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That's good. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it, Bruce. I'm with it's it. A, it's a look, Send time him every down. Send five time every play. You uncover. You uncover a tactical issue right there. Why is Cody Barton staying on the field and not Jamin yeah. Davis? Who would you rather have? Going sideline to sideline in in the dime, and yeah. or either blitzing in the dime. Cody Barton is he's not good in that space. He just I don't know if he was good. I, I'll, I'll talk about what I know. He has not been good for us in that space, like yeah. out in in the space. Too, he's not too much been space. Good. Too it's much too space. much grass for him. Yeah. So if he's yeah. not he coming forward, him more though. Yeah, that's true. I get it. That's, and and, and he has the green dot. Like I get yeah. that part, but. I don't think Jamin is just great coverage linebacker either, right? No. I mean, they sold us that he was. He hasn't proved it. No. But he's fast enough to at least not let the wide receiver catch the ball, turn a field for 15 yards. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody you know who saying? can account for their mistakes. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think he's a, a elite defensive coordinator. I think he had. I think he coaches high talented players. Yes. That's what I think, JDR, because oh, you sorry. have these guys, and I don't see any type of, like Corey said earlier, I don't see you weaponizing weaponizing these guys at all. Like we should have some coverages where Chase and Montez are standing up on the same side. You know, mm-hmm. Jamin is jabbing in all all like one through three and 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 two through four on, on the defense. He should be walking up to the line of scrimmage more often. We should have a little more pre-snap motion out there. Like, I don't, man. I don't. I don't. I don't think he's elite. I think he's coaching high talented players. To be honest, I think. I think he's a professional coach, right? 
He's a professional coach. He he knows how to talk to to grown men. He knows how to implement a plan, but he doesn't move the needle in terms of like you guys said, like like I like I said, is activating your playmakers. But I think somebody said it better by weaponizing by weaponizing your your playmakers. And you've given him the bankroll. I mean, if you think about it, I'm gonna take his cards before I'm gonna take the offense cards because. Mm-hmm. I want those aces and, and, and those jokers, and he got them. But what are you what are you really doing with them, right? And so, just playing to have a top ten defense. That's top ten defense don't mean anything to me if if they score twenty and and you know if you can score twenty and you've given up twenty four, right? But you in the top ten because you know we had a turnover or something. No, that's not helping me. I need you to lead the pack. I don't need you to follow. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing now, about the defense is they they climbed them rankings towards the end of the season. Like right now we're probably towards the bottom, maybe mid. We're probably mid right now. But like last year you you guys remember we were probably in the same spot and then towards the end they like ramped it up. We started playing better. But like it's too late. It's too late then. Right. What are we like fourth at the end of the season? Cool. Yeah, totally. We didn't make the playoffs. Like awesome. We're fourth. Right. Fourth in defense it doesn't mean anything. I would much rather have a 15th ranked defense and we in the NFC championship game than have a fourth yeah. ranked defense sitting at home eating Buffalo wings watching the Eagles. Well, I don't know if I could be Buffalo eating, wings. I'd be too nervous, but yeah, I, I, I got what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, like I, I don't know, we, 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 we're, we're, we're gonna get out here in, in a couple minutes, but no, Percy Butler is, is not playing linebacker. Um, Cam Curl, he plays it, or nickel, whatever, Buffalo Nick, whatever you want to call it. He's up near the line of scrimmage. But, again, he's small stature, too. Like, you can't keep him up there like an entire game. Um, you know, so I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I need I need JDR to be more, be more creative, man. Like, and, no, everybody is not Miles Garrett. Everybody is not Michael Parsons. Like, them dudes is, is, is one-on-ones. Like, we thought – we had somebody like that, but it just hasn't come to fruition with Like, we'll see. The verdict is still out, but them dudes be just walking along the line. Like, you see, like, like they <laughs> – you see the play the other day where Miles Garrett kept moving and them tight ends kept following him and yeah. they called a timeout? Like, I mean, everybody <laughs> doesn't do that. You know what I'm saying? But these dudes playing basketball in front of the center before yeah. the snap, like, that's total disrespect. Like <laughs> – but we don't we we don't have that man. We we don't we we don't have that man and, and that's disappointing because we have talented players. Um uh discipline that E B is supposed to be expecting. There's a lot of undisciplined ball band play. It is, man. You know, and you know, I, go ahead. Oh, you got it, Ken. Go ahead, Ken. I know that we've been kind of on the defense here for the last 30, 35 minutes, but I do want to defend them a little bit, defending the defense. Um, did anyone see the stats for Josh Allen from that game? He was 20 of 32. He did have an interception on D passes, almost like a punt. Um, but he was 20 of 32 for 218 yards. Now, did y'all think he, it, did it seem like he passed for more like 300 yards? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. yeah, okay. Kinda, All right. I'll give you kinda, that. Kinda, kinda. But the uh-huh. defense, the, 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 look, the offense, I don't think, did the defense too many favors. No, no, they didn't. Look, look at the one pass, and Sam Hell got out into open space, and he was going to try to do a short pass to uh, I think it was either a running back or maybe a tight end out in the flat. And he extended his arm way up high. He's an overhand passer. We know that. Mm -hmm. He's not a side arm or three-quarters arm. He's the overhand. And he tried to throw that overhand and threw it right to the defensive lineman in front of him. (coughs) Excuse me. But, you know, he should have faked that the defensive lineman there, then go around, either run down for more yardage or, you know, get it out to that receiver. But guess what happened? It became a pick six. So the defense overall, I think, had fewer points that they gave up in this game. 
and it was the offense that really fueled uh, this loss. Um, I'm not, you know, absolving the defense of anything on Sunday, but I think that uh, um, the offense is more to blame in this game than the defense. Can on yeah, that like. Rollout, he, it, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sean. On that rollout, that was Jahan Dotson. If he had got that ball there, Jahan Dotson would not be playing this week. That was a hospital ball because mm-hmm. cause somebody was coming down to kill him. Right. And I was oh, like, yeah. okay. That's why I said, <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. That's why I said he could have taken off and run for about eight or 10 yeah. yards. I don't know. I don't know that he would have gotten past Epinesa either way. Um, no. The, the, the fact is the guy's out there running for his life. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the point that I'm making is because of that, when he makes a mistake, you can't allow the team to either. And a couple of things, Josh Allen made his, made his impact on the ground. He, he didn't, he didn't make the impact in the air. So that 20 for 32, you know, some of it was just when he's breaking, there's nobody. And that's what we've been complaining about all week. But I would also say <laughs> from a, from a offensive standpoint, um, if Sam is running for his life and, you know, you, you're sitting down with, what, nine sacks and five turnovers, um, you know, I'm not blaming the defense for that. What I'm saying is the defense has to right some of the wrongs because that's where we have spent our money. That's the point that I've been trying to make all week. And so, you know, but, you know, again, these are not the same old commanders. I think that was that's going to that's going to prove to be an anomaly in the season. I think I think is I think people are going to be very surprised uh, this week, and I, I know Deuce, I'm probably getting ahead of you, but I think no, people are going to be people going to be very surprised at what we um, really can do. I, I just think it was a it was an awkward situation, but I think from a defensive standpoint, <laughs> we have to make adjustments on the defense. We can't roll that same eleven out there and those yeah. same backups and not do any adjustment to the scheme and think that that is good enough because the stats say that it's good enough. It's, it's yeah. not good enough. And to your point, yeah. um, Josh Allen had uh, three rushes for 46 yards. That's 15 yards a pop. That goes yards. all on third downs, I think. Except, third for downs, last, I think. Yeah. except for the last one. The last one that was the touchdown run. Man, look, like, <clears throat> look, looking at that box score, if you didn't watch the game, you would have think we got dog walk. We, right. we didn't. We and didn't we did. get dog walk. Um, th- that's an elite quarterback, which makes it a, a, a great to one of the best offenses in the league. And, you know, the defense did hold them to 16 nothing. Like, that's not that's not easy to do. You know what I'm saying? But when we're talking about our defense and the players that we have and, and uh, like, uh, uh, Unk's point, is like the, the players that we have, the resources that we put, like, we need y'all to show up every game. Right. Right. We need y'all to show up every game. That's what's preventing us from being elite. Yeah. And JDI not putting them in positions to to be those records. Like it's JDI, man. He has to get those boys more freeway, more freedom, uh, mm-hmm. to get out there and 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 yeah. And 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 and, and how <clears throat> how is athletic enough, Addison? Like, come on, like it's not like he out there like a robot. You ain't see that. 13 yard scramble he did spinning and bouncing off tackles. Oh, man. Like, yeah, you, know, you, 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 like, you, you, you are. Yeah, man, she he, is talking reckless. He don't, he don't need to be doing that though, honestly. Nah, he don't, but he's still young, so he can take it a little bit. Like, nah, he, he needs to slide at the end at some point. Yeah, he feel like a tank. That joint spinning. Yeah, yeah saddle, saddle, saddle job crushed him. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> Andy landed on him. Yeah. Look, Andy, Andy put his full yeah. body weight on him. Yep. He's like, you gonna feel this today. Did. Yeah, he right, is out yeah. there like he's on the East, Easter Egg Hunt Commission. Um, <laughs> all right, y'all. Let's get ready to wrap it up. Let's do real quick. Um, and we'll start with South. How can we win Sunday? Ball control. Run the ball. Score more points than them. Score more points than them. Never fails. <laughs> That's it, Ken. baby. Yeah, how can we win on Sunday? Um. South nailed it. Control the ball. Control both sides of the line of scrimmage as well. We have the defensive line. The offensive line needs now to step up. And Sam Howell needs to 
get the ball out quicker. I mean, these are all things we already know. Um, and uh, hey, Kim, I see you in there. Um, Unk, how can we win Sunday? All right. So he, here's the game plan. Uh, balance on offense. Short passing game. None of that five-step drop stuff. Everything short. Everything short. The running game. Capitalize on the running game. Find out where you can run, which which off tackle you can run, and hammer them. And then defense has to wreak havoc. So balance, havoc, turnovers. That's the that's the game plan right there. Yeah, man. We need, we need the we need the defense to wreak havoc and get us the ball back. I agree. We gotta we we have to like like everyone. We gotta control the ball. We gotta run. We gotta run right at them. We gotta mix mm -hmm. it up. We gotta do some pre-snap motions. Mm -hmm. Let's move around. Let's do some stuff. You know, may, may, maybe EB is waiting for the Eagles game to really show who he is. Right? <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe that's what's happening, right? Maybe, maybe that's exactly what, what's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you about to see this, 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 this all-world offense. You know he gonna open up the playbook this week, huh? Yeah, he gonna open up the playbook, man. He gonna open up the playbook. Run the ball, control the clock, and show passes. D stop and run. Yeah, Kayla. Um, let's yeah, let's let's do it. I, um, I can't wait um, uh, for this game. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be in Philly, so it's gonna be nasty. It's gonna be a nasty week, but um, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, that's the show, man. JT Unk, we greatly, greatly appreciate you for joining us today, man. Hopefully, you'll Thank be willing, willing to come back. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, you do know he can he can ask me just about anything, and I'm on I'm gonna think it, I'm gonna think I can do it. You know, I'm old, but I might be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything you want to? Look, let's let Ken go go last, because uh, uh, I don't know if if Ken want to want to do a shout out or not. But uh, South, any last anybody, comments, man? Anybody got score predictions? <sighs> See, I, I was trying not to do it. See that. See, like, like, I do the script, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not your role, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not your You said, hey, this is the end of the show, so I was like, all right, it's not coming, so. <laughs> Go ahead, Sal. Which, I was like, it's not coming. So? I don't have any score predictions. I was just Me throwing either. it out there. To <laughs> Me either. Um, if I, ha I, if I had to, if the, good, if the good commanders come out, I think we win 24-22 in a nail biter. If the bad commanders come out, I don't want to. I might not be on the show next week. <laughs> Real quick, uh, you got a score prediction? Um, what did they score this week? You know, I don't pay no attention to nobody but us. What did they score this week? It wasn't that Philly. much. What did Philly uh, score this week? Twenty-five. Against Tampa. Twenty-five. 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 25. Okay, I know. I know the weather was rough. They played almost a perfect game, in my opinion, from what they are able to do right now, and they scored twenty five points. Right? It's going to take. It's going to take at least twenty seven points to win this game. Right? And so I am saying, uh, Commanders thirty, Eagles twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> EB, <laughs> we need you. Yeah, that's right. You about to come out, boy. EB, no, no, no it, and it's not. It's not EB. You know what it is? If the defense, defense crank it up, gonna he gonna defense get gonna short field. If you, his defense look, gonna score. Look at look at, look at what Ken said about about the Bills. Josh Allen ain't had no four hundred yard game. He had two hundred and change. They got five takeaways. They got nine sacks. Wreak havoc. Yeah. We should have scored more for sure. We should have scored more points. All right, Ken. Last last words and score prediction. Um, if we lose as bad as South thinks that we could, um, <laughs> I won't be on the show either. The two of us are going to be <laughs> the two of us are going to be at Waffle House next week. <laughs> You're on your own. Maybe you can get some sort of internet hookup at Waffle House. <laughs> That's where we will be. Okay.
Okay. Um, <coughs> I wrote a book a few years ago on reverse psychology. Don't buy it. <laughs> now, what I'll say, get the dad joke out of the way, is I'm going to go with re reverse psychology and say Philadelphia 27-24. That's it. Uh, last word? Oh, okay. Um, I, I just want to see the team competitive this week. They weren't competitive last Sunday. I just want to see a competitive team. If that's the case, I think they'll come out a few days later against the Bears on Thursday night, have a really good game, and get back on track. Oh, yeah, that's right. We do play next Thursday. Yep. <laughs> I, well, I guess we will be on that show then on Wednesday because it's a short week. <laughs> now, you see, you see, you see Ken with her uh, waffles. So uh, <laughs> I'll have a Waffle House hat on me. I'm going to go find one this week, kid, because that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thumbnail would definitely be something dealing with Waffle and Waffle House next next week, for sure. For sure. Yeah, Commissioner, we're we not panicking over here, bro. We're not panicking here. Um. All right, y'all. That's good. Look, listen, I appreciate all of you for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, for listening. We appreciate you using your time. We know it's very valuable to you and for you to use it with us. We definitely, definitely appreciate it. Remember, do it because you love it, not because it loves you. One beat, one sound, one heart.